Hey everybody, welcome to Medalvani. This is Vitek here with legendary Glenn Drover of, of N number of bands he has played with. Welcome to the show, brother. Thank you very much. So, I mean, your history, when I look at that, it's it's very diverse. You've worked with Megadeth, you've worked with King Diamond, you know, Queensryche A, Queensryche B. Queensryche, I actually didn't work with them. What, what had happened was um, I was uh, contacted by Jeff Tate because he had, you know, they had just split, you know the story. Right. And um, I was going to work with him. And what happened was um, we were all flown in for a, a photo shoot. Mm-hmm. for this new lineup, and he was going to call it Queensryche. At the time, I didn't know he was going to call it Queensryche. Um, and um, we, we didn't even actually play together or nothing. It was kind of odd because it just it was like a bunch of guys stuck in a room taking pictures and uh, all nice people and everything, but it just didn't feel right to me, you know, and uh, and the direction and, and also calling the band Queensryche, and there's going to be two Queensrykes, and it was just... I just didn't I didn't want to get caught up in all that stuff, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and I felt bad, like I said, but, uh, you know, because Jeff is really nice to me and all that stuff. So, I, I you know, I still feel bad about it to this day, what, how I handled it, but there was no other way I could do it. Um, I just did. I just felt that, oh, this is uh, this is not what I want to be doing here. And and I left. So I actually never worked with um, with Jeff Tate. The other guys, the, the other the, the, the Queensryche, um, the original band, mm-hmm. or for the most part. Um, yeah, I know those guys a little bit more, you know, and I've done the work with Todd, Todd as you know, uh, right? Yeah, <laughs> but uh, you know, did that single with him? We've had some fun with that and all that. And I played with them once or twice, and but that's about it. Just to, I just wanted to clarify that, right? Because since we're talking about the Queens, right? I mean, as a fan, we all think, uh, or we always consider the first four or the first five albums of Queens, right, as as masterpieces. So that right. actually represents Queens, right, and not what right. what they did post those albums. Right. That's what I, I, I 100% agree with that. That's that for me. The, the, that's that's what you know defined the band was those first four, four or five albums. So and and that's kind of like what I wanted to be doing if there was going to be new material uh, worked on with Jeff. And I spoke to him about that briefly on the one day mm-hmm. and uh, when I was in Seattle. And and he he you know he didn't want to do that. He wanted to do something different. And that was cool. You know he he's been doing this for a long time. Right. Um, but it was definitely a little bit of a clash of what we thought would be a good way of moving forward. But uh, yeah, I agree with that. So d- did this happen before Frequency Unknown was released or yeah, was it after sure. that? Yeah, it was because it was, uh, you know, we just put this together and um, it was a slightly different initial lineup to, to do this. It was um, Rudy Sarzo was there and he's still there, as we know. Right. Uh, um, and it was me and uh, the drummer from Rat, Bobby Blotzer, which was kind of an odd pairing, I thought. Yeah, nice combination. Guy, nice guy, but um, you know, it, it wasn't a right, the right guy to get. And, and he ended up uh, bowing out, and uh, they got um, Simon Wright. He's a great drummer, so he can do whatever. So uh, that was a good choice. But yeah, that was the initial lineup. And then the other guys that are there is now were, were those guys that were in that uh, initial lineup when I was there. And uh, no, it was just talked about at that time. They were just talking about, we just, you know, got some label interest. Mm-hmm. We're going to call it Queens, right? And I was like, whoa, thinking to myself, no, this is not good. And um, but that was just my opinion. And um, and then they, uh, you know, I guess that, you know, half a year down the line, they put that album out. So All right. So then we had the other Queens that are coming up with the self titled album, which actually took us back to that 80s sound, which which Queens Rack is known for. So as a fan, it must have been a you know a, you know quite difficult for you to digest Frequency Unknown as compared to the other guys who came out with the self titled album. Well, I didn't. You know what? I I heard one or two songs from from again. It's just because the, of the weirdness of the whole. You know, here's two bands that are called Queens Rack. You got all this friction that's going on. It was just obviously. Right kind of strange but um i did hear one or two songs off jeff's album and i thought the songs were actually quite good mm-hmm. um again it was kind of an odd thing because apparently on the album all the guys that were recruited rudy sars all these guys that could be slightly wrong but i don't think i am but they weren't even on the album he ended up using other people right right you That's know true. So if i would have been if i would have even made it to that point i would have been I, that i would have been very disappointed you know, be it that here's the band. Oh, by the way, we're going to use different guys. Um, no. Oh. So that was a strange, 
maneuver there. But anyways, again, that's that's you know Jeff's thing, and you know absolutely. Uh, but when I getting to uh, the Queensrÿche album, um, uh, you know the the original band, um, yeah, I, I I quite like that album a lot, as a matter of fact. And I I thought, yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a combination of um, more of a kind of a you know you have the modern production and you have um, mm-hmm. you know return to it's what I call return to form in terms of the songwriting right. and having a singer that you know can really you know kind of hone in on those that original kind of style True. and uh, and again you know you have the mixture of the modern and, and I think and, and the original um, format of the band so I, I, I like the album a lot actually. Oh, that's awesome. Now, you know, we're talking about the different artists you work with. You have Idolon with your brother, Sean Drover, Metal Illusion. So, so many things you've been doing from, you know, for almost the last two to three decades. How has yeah. been this entire journey, you know, for you as a musician? Well, it, you know, to make it, I could go on for an hour, which of course I won't, but so I'll kind of make it for you. Basically, what happened was in the early, early 90s, I really had kind of been bitten by this bug of, of getting you know, some, some gear of any, you just any kind of gear that, that I can get the ball rolling of, of doing like home recordings. Uh-huh. And it wasn't really a big thing back then. Not a lot of people were doing it. So I did get a little bit of equipment together, you know, raise some money, get some, you know, initial, a couple of cool initial pieces and started getting into doing, you know, just recording, doing home recording. Mm-hmm. And, um, cause I think we we're just tired of being ripped off of, you know, going into certain studios and them, them charging us a million dollars and and us coming out with, with a bunch of crap because the engineers had no idea what we were trying to do. Right. So I was just wanting to do is just that whole philosophy of, you know, if you want something done right, you do it yourself type of, you know, attitude. And um, and so I, I started diving into that. And um, by like about 93 or so, then Sean said, you know, let's let's do – let's do some instrumental stuff, you know, and, and, and shop that around. It was just going to be me and him and a bass player. Mm-hmm. And so we started doing that and we had to come up with some kind of names. So we called it idol on Sean came up with this name, this right. strange name, which nobody could pronounce very few anyway. And, um, <laughs> that became a real annoyance, but, um, we stuck with the stupid name and, uh, and then, um, that carried on into a band as you know, and we, we got a singer and formed that into more of a metal band with vocals and all that kind of stuff and did a series of albums. Right. And, um, so that carried on for quite a while. And then the King Diamond gig came up in the late eight or nineties. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I was in there for a few years and then, um, then I bowed out. My lifestyle had changed and it wasn't, I wasn't able to accommodate that situation, unfortunately, although I love all those guys. Um, I had to leave, and, um, and then, of Make course, the Mega thing came up a few years later. Mm-hmm. In between all that, you know, me and Sean still carried on, you know, recording and, and doing uh, Eidolon records. Right. Because mm-hmm. we were primarily a recording band. We did a handful of festivals, which were fun, but primarily a recording project or band. Right. So then after that, I joined Megadeth, and, um, of course, Sean did after that. And um, when I had left... You know, at that point, with what I've just said, you know, doing all the Eidolon albums and Megadeth and King Diamond and all that stuff, it's all metal and it's all great. It's all the stuff I've, I grew up with. But not that's not the only kind of music I grew up with. I also grew up with a lot of jazz fusion guys like you know, Al Demiola and, and Jean-Luc Ponty and Return to Forever Band and, and all that stuff. So that was part of what I grew up with as well as metal and all that stuff and, and prog rock, you know, like early, you know, 70s prog rock. like Rush, Genesis yes. And, Emerson, Lake and Palmer and Jethro Tull and yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. So I kind of wanted to do something that was going to also, um, where, where I could, I could play, dive into those, that kind of style of music that I grew up with and, and was very fond of. And that's what I tried to achieve on that metal illusion album, which right. was basically a, a mixture of a little bit of metal, probably more so for my guitar tones and prog rock and jazz fusion. That's pretty much what, you know, and that's what the name of, of the album metal illusion kind of, it's it's same, you know. It's a, it's a combination of different styles of Absolutely. rock and prog and all that kind of stuff. So and then doing that and then you know um, aside from that, I guess again the the, the Queen's right thing did not take off, but um, but I did do some work with Testament live and that was a lot yeah. of fun. There, guys, really but that was, them. yeah, that was basically a fill in for Alex. You know, he was doing some other stuff and and couldn't commit to uh, to some touring that they had, uh, right? Some yeah. offers that they had, so. Um, and I know the guys, and they're all great guys to work with. So it was a lot of fun, and you know, and 
And, and yet another thing that I can, you know, uh, try to, to, to tackle, playing in another band that I grew up listening to, very challenging music. And uh, again, it was, it was a, lot of, a lot of fun, really, really good. Probably the, some of the nicest people I ever worked with. Awesome. Now, you know, Eidolon was, was, you know, the last album which you guys came out was in 2006, The Parallel Other World. So yeah. is there any possibility of you, you know, and your brother Sean coming up with the new album, let's say in future, because now that Sean is working on something else and, you know, you guys can work together and, and basically reunite the band. Sure, we could, you know, and, and who knows what's going to happen. What I can tell you is that um, there is talk about doing maybe one a, a one-off festival mm -hmm. uh, in about a year from now. I'm not going to get into details because it's not it's not confirmed. confirmed so. Mm -hmm. so there's no point in uh, in doing that and and, and jinxing my uh, the, the the possible situation. But um, one thing that is going to happen is there's a new single that uh, because as you know I've been doing singles lately. Right. So we did one song uh, and decided, hey, let's do like an Eidolon track that, you know, we haven't done any recording in almost 10 years. Nice. Uh, uh, so let's let's do something. And we contacted Nils and all that. And and, um, and we did a song. It's not I have to do some guitar bits and pieces to finish off the song, but it's very good. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it's already recorded. Drums, vocals, all that stuff. I just got to do just finish a few things on my end, like I mentioned. And we're probably going to release that in the early new year as a new idol on single. Um, but going forward, you never know. It could be, I think we would probably end up still, I think we would treat it more as a side kind of thing at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but who knows, right? One thing I could say, like I said, is we're going to, we're going to put this single out and have some fun with that. A lot of people have asked us along the way if we're ever going to do anything aside from yourself. Uh, you know, and and here's the first thing we're going to do. So maybe like February or March, we're gonna we're gonna put it out. Uh, that's awesome. Now you also did a single with with Todd Latore, the Discordia, which came out. You know, and and fans actually, you know, uh, the song has actually taken you know time to make it rounds and really sink in. So how right. do you feel how the fans, you know, uh, you know, kind of acknowledge to your song? Well, I mean, that song actually did quite well. I mean, we uh, to be honest with you, the uh, for Amazon. And uh, iTunes, mm -hmm. Amazon, it went up as high as number five in the top 200 metal chart of singles. Cool. You know, I remember Sean calling me and saying, hey, it made it to like 127 in this. I didn't even know about this metal chart thing. I'm like, wow, cool. We made, you know, the top 200. That was a big thing, you know. And, you know, for whatever that whatever, whatever that means nowadays, I'm not sure. But it's it's definitely cool regardless. And um, And then within a few days, it made it up as high as number five. So that was a really cool accomplishment when we were very excited about that. You know, we're really happy with the song. You know, I thought it came out really good. And uh, again, it was another, you know, uh, um, initially what it had. See, where all this came from is initially I was going to do an album that was going to be full of different singers. Okay. It was going to be, you know, every song was going to be a different singer. And I talked to several singers and I was going to do that. And then somehow along the way, you know, we did the Todd. When me and Todd finished the song, we thought, let's just put this out as a single and see what happens. What happens. And mm -hmm. after that, and then all the results that I told you about, for me, it was like, wow, this is a really cool, I think a really cool way forward these days because albums, you know, people buy albums and they might listen to the first two songs and they've already picked up another 10 albums an hour later. And, you know, it's just it's such a, such an overflood of product that cool. is a little bit different. It's, it's easy to get your head around it. It's only four minutes. You know, in these times of where people that have, uh, you know, this, the, the attention spans are not as good, and, and my and, and me included, that's not a cut up. It's just this just the world we live in, you know. Right. And technology, technology is to blame, of course, for the, all that. But uh, good and bad with technology. Absolutely. So, any possibility of you working on some other singles with Todd, maybe you know, next year? Possibly. We haven't talked about doing another one yet, but I would imagine at some point we'll do one. Sure, because I mean that one, you know. That we're really proud of that one, and I think at some point we'll definitely do something, but there hasn't been anything talked about. But what I can tell you is before the Eidolon single comes out, there's one, one song that I've had in the can for a while, mm -hmm. and I think it's time to put it out. And what it is is a song I did with uh, a singer named Hen Henning Bossy, which is uh, – he's from a, a band – uh, uh, or used to play in a band in Germany called Metallium. Okay. And uh, he's he's played in several bands, and, and he's a, an amazing singer and a guy that I've always wanted to do something with. And uh, it turned out the feeling was mutual. He wanted to do something with me as well. So 
So we did this one song. It turned out to be a, a song called Seven Spirits, which is actually a, a, the title track song from a, an Eidolon album that we did that was released independently okay. way back. It was one of the first things that, me, uh, you know, first first Eidolon album. It's one of the first ones. Are you talking about the, uh, the Sacred Shrine? No, it's called Seven Spirits, this one. Oh, the, the one which came out in 1997 before, you know, a Nightmare That's World. One. Yeah, that's the one. It's called Seven Spirits. Yep. Right. That's the one. So we redid the, the title track, and um, most people won't know it. It was an independent release, and there was only very, very few copies that were actually manufactured and sold mm -hmm. back then, you know. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to put that out, which might come out, I think, early in January. So coming up real soon. So that's the next focus for me is putting that single out and having some fun with that. And then following that will be the uh, the Eidolon single. That's awesome. So is there any possibility of you, let's say, is there any project which is currently happening at the background, let's say the, the group of musicians you're working with to, let's say, come up with an album or something, or it's just going to be purely singles with, with the different artists? Well, right now, as far as I can see, I just, that's what, that's what's concrete at this point, which is doing this, this single. single with him. First single with uh, with Henning, and then uh, another single with the Eidolon in uh, in the early New Year. But no, there's no like I said, February March would probably be the the new Eidolon single will come out. But aside from that, no, there's there's no talk. I've you know I've talked to different people about different possibilities, but um, at this point, um, nothing concrete at all. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just kind of focusing really more on the singles right now and just having fun with that. And uh, but of course, I'm always open to any possibilities. You know, that uh, if it was something, it's all, you know, for me, it's all about the music. It's never been right. about or any, anything plastic. It's got to be something that I believe in and want to do. <clears throat> it's got to be wholehearted. I would never abuse music. True. So anything I do is always, it always comes from I want to do it. It's an inspiration or whatever. It's never a forced thing or I you know, try to make a couple of bucks. It's never been like that. And that's one thing I'm really proud of, you know. Fantastic, Glenn. So, Glenn, as we all know that that, that Sean and, and Broderick mm -hmm. now have a new group together. So th there's been a lot of speculation on the Internet that, you know, who's going to be the singer, who's going to be the other guitarist or, you know, or bass player or something. So somewhere I read that there might be a possibility of you joining the brother for, um, you know, for, you know, for this particular band. And they also have, I think, uh, recruited the singer of uh, Scar, I think Scar the Muddy or the, the Joey Jordison's uh, it's a side project. Yeah, you know, the thing with, with as far as what, what they're going to do in terms of who the singer is going to be, you know, and uh, the bass player and all that stuff, I'm not really too sure, but I'm sure it's going to be finalized real soon. Mm -hmm. I know they're talking to a few different people, you know. So uh, once that's decided, everybody will know, you know, which, which should be, like I said, real soon. Uh, as far as me joining, I don't see that. There has been not, not been any talk about that. I, that's purely kind of a Sean and Chris thing, and they're doing their own thing. And I really don't have any interest to uh, to get in, in, in on that uh, because I think I just look at it as more of a, you know, that's a project that, or, or a band, rather. It's a band. It's right. not a project for those guys. This is a, a new band they really want to push. So that's that's their thing, you know. And um, But, you know, me and Sean will end up doing some stuff, of course. You know, right. what, what it's going to be you know, a little bit of Eidolon stuff or this or that. It doesn't, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out. The good news is that we will do some some stuff. While he was in Megadeth, it was kind of a different um, scenario there. So right. now that now that they're out of that, um, there's all kinds of possibilities. But True. what's going to happen, who knows, right? Absolutely. But, uh, I don't see, as far as joining that band, no, it's, it's, that's not something I don't think would ever happen, no. All right. Now, now being an idol on with you know, with Sean and then Megadeth and playing alongside your brother for so long, was there ever a time when the music put, uh, let's say, a strain on your personal relationship with him? No, we've always got along. You know, it's kind of a freak thing. Um, you know, we have our little spats, which are very, very far and few, you know, few and far between. But we uh, we've always um, got along um, personally and and musically as well. We've always had the same you know, ideas and taste and um, same vision. And so we've never had any, there's never been any conflicts really, you know, we always get along. There's never, never any big issues. <clears throat> so um, we've been really kind of lucky that way ever since we were kids, you know, and um, we've had a lot of fun. We've had a lot of great experiences together. And um, so, yeah, we're, we're really fortunate for that. 
That's really awesome. Now, in your years with uh, with Megadeth, I mean, you must have gotten to know Dave Mustaine fairly well. Now, yeah. I mean, we all have a different perspective of what Dave is all about. Now, considering the musicians who have worked with him very closely, is he really as hard to work as the rumor you know would suggest? Well, you know, there's well, I mean, there, there's there's a lot of there's been a lot of personnel changes uh, in the band throughout the years. Like like you said, you know, you you, you acknowledge that. Uh, there's a lot of changes, period, um, you know, with, with just anybody that's in the organization. And, um, you know, I, I, what I could say is that uh, I think that speaks for itself, sure. You know, I mean, and, and, and he'll probably tell you the same thing. But, you know, for me, I, up until the time I left, we actually had a lot of good times. We never had any big falling out, you know, anything like that. We actually had, I have a lot of good memories uh, especially probably from the first two years, maybe the last six months or so, things got a little bit, uh, started to change. And I, I wasn't as, um, see, a lot of people thought I left because I just wanted to stay home and look at the walls, right. which is kind of, which is quite ridiculous, but whatever. I, I you know, it, it's, it's, it's an old story, but you know, I, I just, um, I didn't like it. I didn't like being in that atmosphere anymore because it wasn't as, uh, as fun as, and, and positive as it once was. So, and I was getting a little bit disillusioned and a little bit irritated with certain things. And it just became, it got to a point where I was like, okay, I, I'm not happy. I can't right. abuse music. I had to leave. And that's, that was pre pretty much the story. There was really nothing more to it than that. Right. Absolutely. Now, you know, you also made it very clear on your Facebook page that, you know, you're just not going back to make it even if uh, they must stay in approach. So that's really cool to see that you cleared out the rumor, you know, because people no, talk, <laughs> talk about a lot, isn't it? Well, you know, the thing is with that is it's it's funny how the, the power of the Internet, uh, all it was that purely just came from I had I had a bunch of messages sent to me on on uh, Twitter, uh, uh, Facebook, blah, blah, blah. You know, people asking me that question, but it was just, you know, it wasn't like a, a million people asking. It was quite a few. But I just instead of answering, giving everybody the same answer, I thought I'm just going to do a group thing here and say, hey, guys, sorry, you know, for the people that inquired. Right. I, do it it wasn't like this big announcement you know but it turned into an announcement that oh yeah i would never but it wasn't even talked about you know they i'm sure they've moved on as much as i have you know and um it, that's it, that was it was that simple but turned into something where it was more like a uh, like i said an announcement and it wasn't it was all it was was just uh was just uh just answering a few questions, Two questions and, and right. once instead of answering it 50 times you know Right, that's absolutely true. Now, even fans have been quite excited because uh, they must have recently tweeted that, you know, they've actually fans are going to be very happy with what's happening in the camp. So it looks like the lineup is almost complete. Then again, the speculation will be there till the time they make an official announcement. Yeah, you know, I don't know what they're going to do. I would imagine it would be by the little video that they did, I would I would bet money I don't have. It's Nick Menza and drums, you know, and whoever the guitar player is, we'll find out. But, you know, a lot of people, a lot of the fans want that, and that's great, you know? Right. So, I mean, I, I, can, I, can, uh, I can understand from, like, you know, the fan point of view where, you know, you grew up with a certain band and, and, and you favor a certain lineup and you want that lineup to get back together, where, you know, like Black Sabbath, whatever it is, you know? And so I get that, you know? Um, but, you know, the, the, the thing is also, too, one thing I'm really – happy and proud about is when we were in the band it wasn't supposed to be a, a a megadeth reformation it was supposed to be a farewell tour there wasn't supposed to be this thing that was supposed to carry on for for the last 10 years mm -hmm. when i joined it was we're just going to do this farewell tour i want to end it properly and that was it and oh. but but the reaction we were getting and all the damage that we were doing they've decided no i'm not going to kill the band i'm going to keep this thing going so you know, I'm really happy to be have, and, and proud again to be have put all that hard work and and uh, and really bringing the band back and, and and making it powerful and you know and just going out there and just playing really hard and doing the best we could, you know. Well, so, I didn't know that that you know uh, he was basically planning a to. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people thought it was a reformation period. Purely, all it was was uh, apparently he hurt his arm at some point. And then, um, you know, he, he basically put this album out, the system has failed, and it was getting good reviews, and he decided he wanted to do a, re, a, 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 a farewell tour. Mm -hmm. 
I think initially he was going to be looking at that rust and peace lineup. He had recruited Nick, Nick Menza, then me, and then we got Jimmy McDonough in the band. Right. And then we went to rehearsals, and Nick wasn't working out, and was let go, and then Sean was brought in. True. That's how that's how it that's how it went. It's very simple, but it was supposed to be that. And then after the after the farewell tour, he was going to continue with calling the band Dave Mustaine. Okay. Wanted us to be involved in that, and for me, it didn't make any sense because one minute we're called Megadeth, and the next minute we're called <laughs> Mustaine. Right. Uh, that just wasn't a good idea, and I I we all had said, hey, you know, we're all interested in. in if you want to carry on the Megadeth thing, I'm not really as interested in the Dave Mustaine thing, because that just it's, that just creates confusion and you know and um, I didn't want to have anything to do with that. And then he ended up keeping the name, and then the, you know the band just kept going and it hasn't stopped ever since. Absolutely, Glenn. Now you know the spending time with your family has has been very important to you, you know, as a musician and as a father as well. That you need to take care of a lot of things. So how do you balance your musical career with your family life? It's easy because everything I do is from home. Okay. I do is, is all online. I do all my sessions online. Uh, I do a lot of session work for people. Mm -hmm. uh, I do a lot of uh, a lot of everything. You know, I'm a music teacher. I'm a, I do session work. I, I, I produce. I'm producing people's albums. I'm, I'm all over the map, but it's all music related. And uh, so, every, you know, unless I'm out playing live, which is not, you know, as often these days. Right. Uh, at this point, anyways, like I said, if something comes up, cool. But at this point, it's um, you know, pretty low keyed, and which is fine with me. And uh, so that's what I do. So everything is very low keyed, and I get to do you know things the way I want to from home. So it's great. Fantastic. Now you know, working with so many legendary musicians, you know, like like we discussed earlier. So if I were to ask you to to let's say name one band or artist that you would love to play with in the future, who would it be? If there was, I mean, if I had to pick one one band to play with, I really so want one band or an artist in your career with whom yeah, you've probably, worked. Probably Ozzy, you know, I think would be a lot of fun because I grew up as a big, you know, a Sabbath fan, and um, you know, I think that would be a lot of fun, you know, something like that. But uh, you know, that's probably not going to happen. But um, but if I was just to pick one, you know, possibility, yeah, that would be fun, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Now, you know, we were actually, I think, very few months away when you actually quit Megadeth. And then after two to three months, I think Megadeth came to India for the first time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your fans actually were, you know, expecting the band to come along with Glenn Drover on guitars. But, yeah. then, you know, the thing happened and then, you know, Broderick came in. So, uh, yeah. eventually it didn't happen. I mean, you couldn't come to India. So, which was pretty much disappointing for a lot of fans. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. I mean, it, it was just you know the timing, and I was like, yeah, shit. You know, after like you know they ended up going, and it was it just happened to be after my time. But right. when I was in the band, I don't even remember any talk. I mean, the closest we got, I guess, was Dubai. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is how far from you? Yeah, it's uh, roughly around two and a half hours, three hours journey by a flight. Yeah, yeah. So it's still a little ways, but that was probably the closest I was able to get. But uh, yeah, I mean, there was still, of course, a lot more ground to cover, you know, and it just, it, that was one of, that's one of the unfortunate things that happens, you know, when somebody leaves or is asked to leave or whatever, you know, yeah. you kind of sometimes, and, and that was obviously a, you know, a, a bit of a bummer because, you know, Sean carried on the band. I started to kind of miss playing with him in the band. You know, there was a, a time, a couple of years after I left, I was kind of thinking, oh, it'd be kind of cool to get back in the band and, and, um. And then, but that didn't last too long. And then, you know, we I did this kind of an odd tour with Testament, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. filling in for Alex. And uh, it was actually a package, and it was Megadeth headlining and right. Testament and Exodus. And um, so I went out there. So that was a little bit strange, obviously. But um, seeing how things work and all that stuff, I was quickly reminded of why it was probably a good idea for me to have left, you know. And um, again, all due respect. You know, Dave uh, uh, helped further my career, and uh, mm -hmm. I'll always be grateful for that. But uh, it, it just became quickly apparent that it was not for me anymore. Absolutely, Glenn. Now, I don't know when we will have an opportunity of seeing you in India, at least for a guitar clinic or let's say with, with any band in future. So, you know, fingers crossed. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's always a possibility too. I mean, you know, I'm with Schechter now, and, and I'm not sure how much overseas 
clinic stuff they do. I think they did a little bit with Jeff Loomis, but I'm not, I don't know how much they're going to be getting into that. You know, these days with the economy and everything, everybody's, you know, scared to spend money and all this crap. So yeah. who knows what the future will bring, but um, hopefully something does happen. I'm, I'm, I'm all game for it. You know, <laughs> so it's, just a, it's just a question of, uh, of having the right opportunity. True. Absolutely. So, true. And, um, but I had, nothing's been talked about yet, but Hey, you never know what tomorrow you brings. Know. <laughs> Absolutely, Glenn. Been an honor having a chat with you. It's very rare we get to have a, an in detail discussion with an artist. So really appreciate you taking some time for the interview. Yeah, no problem. And thank you very much.